Good. Over to you, Matt, for your, your case study. Cool. Thank you. So if I start on what we did at the very, very beginning, week one, which was defining the problem and uh, uh, the, uh, the niche that that problem would address um, was, uh, my problem was finding the time to understand and educate ourselves on how to eat healthy. And I believe that problem exists because people are obviously very busy, being healthy is deemed to be expensive, it's uh, time consuming or can be time consuming, we can make it time consuming. And actually, uh, which is a point that we added um, after a couple of uh, fellow students had, had reviewed my week one was that it takes a long time to feel or see or notice the changes off the, the back of attempting to, to be healthy, whether that be physical or mental. Um, it's not an overnight success. You can't just all of a sudden start, you know, um, putting down the fast food and picking up nutritious food and, and, and see anything off the back of it. It takes time and people get bored. So, um, People often pick things up, therefore, and then drop them afterwards because they're not immediately being satisfied with um, the, the uh, success it's meant to give them. So why is it a problem? Why is my problem a problem? Because being healthy is core to both of our uh, long-term and short-term well-being. Without it, in my opinion, anyway, you're missing the core foundations of your lives. If you're not healthy, you might not live a long life or you might not lead a very uh, <laughs> satisfying life, I suppose. Again, physically and mentally, it's not necessarily just a, a physical thing. That this problem uh, exists for why does uh, sorry how is this problem being uh, addressed by other people out there various different ways um really it can span various different indus industries so calorie tracking platforms like my fitness pal or live so or the, the many and so many that all of them are now completely escaping me but there's tons of them um crash diets things like atkins or slim fast things that are being uh, advertised as quick, easy wins to uh, to lose weight ultimately, which is a lot of the time deemed being healthy, but that isn't, in my opinion, the case. Gyms as well, obviously, can more often than not advertise themselves as a, as a way of becoming healthy, when really it's just a small piece of the pie. You go to the gym seven days a week, but if you then go to the KFC next door to the gym, not healthy. Uh, medication, again, is uh, another way in which people can you know, try and make themselves as healthy as possible. Supplements, uh, diet pills, very many, again, different things that people would try and do in order to make themselves uh, a better, more healthier version of themselves. And then last but not least, uh, I suppose a, a guided way is uh, recipe books. So looking for ways in which that people uh, could take the, the hassle away from them and provide them with, do, do all the heavy lifting for them, I think is what I'm getting at, and just give them a list of things that they could make, which will help them again maintain a healthier way or lose weight, whatever it may be. So my target market at the highest level was people who have a conscious belief towards being healthy. Level two was uh, people who, uh, in the health conscious people who don't necessarily have a lot of spare time and or they don't have a, a good understanding of what nutrition means. And then third, breaking it down even more and squeezing it into more of a niche was aged 30 to 40 people. And the reason why I did that, if, um, if you might remember, Henry, and I may keep him silent, was uh, because people of a certain age, in my opinion, have preconceived ideas around um, how to be healthy. You know, Atkins and Slim Fast is particularly targeted at a certain demographic, usually 50 and above the people that will eat less in order to be healthy, whereas this uh, generation, for lack of a better word, in my opinion, has um, more open-mindedness that I feel like it would apply to that niche in particular. And then moving on down, these are the three discovery calls that I did. So I did it with Jamie, who was an ex-colleague, Alex, who is a neighbour, and Eric, who is a friend. All males, um, very different backgrounds between what they do for a living, uh, what they do for, for hobbies. <coughs> to not go into much detail, but if I suppose just quickly go over it, the ways in which people, all three of them have tried to solve it is, like I was alluding to earlier, Meal plans, recipe books, calorie counting, trying to offset bad eating habits by going to the gym, getting a, a, a company such as Gusto to do all of the heavy lifting and just provide them with a bunch of food that they put in their fridge and they prepare and eat. Um, but more often than not, what I thought was interesting that came out of these interviews was that if, if all of the three of these fellows had a magic wand, they wanted something that would take away the confusion and simplify it into something which would explain to them why what they're currently eating is bad for them, if it is, not always the case, but if it is, it will tell them 
suggest alternatives and then try and um, make them more aware of how, how much progress they have made towards that, that goal of becoming healthier. So if I move over to the, the overarching problems and the opportunities, the frustrations, sorry, not problems, that turned into opportunities, the two that I pulled out were that there was a lot of contradictory advice. For example, keto and slim fast would to tell you to do two very different things, but a representative of keto and one of slim fast would uh, both tell you that they're, they're a way of getting healthier. Now, this is what they are in a way, but they're very contradictory. And the, the methods in which you would apply those two methods um, would be very different in terms of what you would actually be doing. And then off the back of that, again, going into like the keto versus slim fast example, all of them, more often than not, are focused on calories rather than um, the content of them and your overall longer term health. You can't track calories for the rest of your life. You could, but it would be a very boring existence and there's too much focus on tracking them for three months um, and losing the weight perhaps that you want to or, or gaining the weight perhaps but a very short termism of track your calories reach your goal and then once you've stopped doing it you don't have the education that you need in order to be able to consistently do this going forward so you put the weight back on or you lose the weight or you lose you lose the, the goal that you originally achieved by tracking calories so I, I believe that the opportunities off the back of that were to ultimately simplify it and then remove the focus on calorie counting as a measure of success, success and instead focus on nutritional value and remove calories. And I put that into a vision of uh, we help busy, health conscious people achieve a longer term, happier and healthier lifestyle. And moving on from that over to product story canvas, which as <coughs> Henry would allude to is a way of explaining this in through the eyes of our ideal customer, I suppose. So my my hero, what do I want the hero to, to do? Or what do what do they want? Therefore, what do I want them to do? Uh, I want them to, to, to be and feel happier and healthier and live a long, happy life, ultimately. But they have a problem, and that problem is that um, all the ways in which they've tried to solve this problem before aren't working, right? So all the apps and the fad diets are designed to keep people yo-yoing and keep coming back, and they're not long-term enough uh, and fast food, right? Fast food is, is exactly what it says in the tin. It's designed to be fast and be convenient, convenient and suits busy, help, you know, age 30 to 40, my, my niche group is designed to, to be convenient towards their lifestyle, but not necessarily healthy or constructive towards that lifestyle if they are indeed health conscious people. Um, my hero's problem, externally speaking, is they don't have any time to do or be any better because they deem that you know, being healthy is uh, of an undertaking, it's not something that you can do on a whim. Internally, there is their perception that being healthy is more expensive, it's more time consuming, it's hard to, to understand and it's even harder to commit to because you, you know, in order to commit to something you need to see results and more often than not with this stuff, results aren't going to happen overnight. And I guess at a deep intrinsic level, uh, my hero and myself believes that everyone deserves to feel happy, to feel healthy, to live a long life. So they meet us, they meet yeah, me, uh, and we have the empathy and the authority. So the empathy that I've got down here is that we have, and it is probably true, followed every fad diet that there is in the book, like you have, and just like you, it didn't work, it didn't last, you put the weight back on, you lost the weight, it, it didn't give you what you truly wanted, which was to, to feel healthy and be healthier and happier. Uh, and the authority that we can give is that we have simplified all of the above fads into something that will help you achieve your goals. We can help you do it, we have done it for in the past. Therefore, comes along the plan, and the process of which is, and th this is a key theme throughout, really, that I've been <coughs> to, to three. It, this is part of the strategic roadmap and the customer journey map as well, is that firstly, understand the downsides of what you've been doing up until this point and this point, including your current diet understand the way forward and then combining those two things that should give you a, a longer lasting and consistent education that would mean that you don't need to um, use those apps anymore or you know the, partake in those fad diets or go to the gym seven days a week to offset the donuts that you had for example the agreement is exactly what I just said really so dedicate uh, yeah sorry yeah dedicate the dedicate that's probably worded dedicate to ditching previous short terms and take control of your own health and build that consistent and lasting education that will enable you to be happy and healthy. Call to action, 
take control of it. No one's going to do it for you. Um, it's up to you. It's up to you to track what your current needs is and therefore change off the back of recommendations to be healthier and build a lasting ability. <coughs> um, and how does that end well? Happy life. You break away from the need to be to be using these apps and these um, you know your your diets and recipe books and services like Gusto forever because you have the ability within it yourself to be able to do it. Uh, and you have a long term education. And Matt, Matt, sorry, I'm going to jump in on this. Feel. Just yeah, we're, we're ten minutes in. I want to make sure you you get through the key frames. Sure. No, I, I was enjoying it, but yes. I was slightly aware of time. Yeah, yeah. No, don't worry, don't worry. I will quickly, I'll quickly go through them. So the failure that you're helping them avoid is they will keep doing the same things over and over again without that longer lasting education, and it takes them from an unhappy physical, uh, <laughs> for lack of a better word, an unhappy mental state of mind and an unhappy relationship, and turns them into someone who doesn't need to be using those apps anymore and is educated and happy. So I came up with my MBO, I actually came up with a few MBOs, but the one that I landed on was, let me zoom in, uh, an extension of the, the vision that went through is uh, helping busy, health conscious people to achieve a long term happier lifestyle by building a relationship with food. I feel like the core offering is is long term education and relationship with food that the, the products that I've uh, gone through will help them build. It's not to track, it's to ultimately to educate these people. And quickly going through the Blue Ocean strategy, the ones I compared. Uh, my products against were my fitness pal, uh, another app called Life Sum, and Gusto, the recipe uh, service where they will give you all of your ingredients for you to cook it for yourself. And the area in which that I felt that is, is a blue ocean and not a red ocean is exactly what I've gone through earlier, so um, ignore that because that's a duplicate of this. So these three really the, the analysis of what you're actually putting inside these apps, the scoring off the back of it to see how you're improving, and then the educational content will ultimately wholly reliant on an app like perhaps some of the apps mm. have you do as you can see over here this is a very red ocean that I don't feel like the purpose of my product is best served is over here where there is a gap in the market where that, that product could really hone in on and be the number one service as opposed to here where all of these apps track all your calories all of these apps have recipes that you can follow but you know more often than not uh, you use the wrong metrics or don't have ingredients that you can find in your local Supermarkets. This, this is the area that I want you to focus in on. And the strategic mode roadmap. And so, again, <coughs> excuse me, going over those three areas is the why, the how, and the what. So, the first area is trying to understand the why behind their current choices, be it unhealthy or not unhealthy, but understanding what their baseline is. The how is um, the, to see the alternatives to their current, how do they take a score of something and improve it to something else. And then the what is, is exactly that. So being able to track and benchmark their score to say, I was over here, and my score being X, and through the education that this app is offering me and the alternatives that it's shifting that I have, I can see that I've improved to Z. And I believe I could do that through uh, like a simple nutrition or scoring method, broken down probably into something along the lines of a, a traffic light system. And Link Canvas, which is obviously to find and make sure that any risks here are mitigated. So again, do you want to continue going through this Henry? Do you want to skip this one? I'll go through it. Depends what you think is so, important um, for, uh, let's say, key stakeholders. Depends what you think is important. Take it. Frameworks and sort of points. Take it. Sorry, sorry, uh, I'll turn the mic. Um, it depends really what you think is important. So, you know, imagine you're presenting this to key stakeholders. Like what kind of information? From the link canvas, might you go into a bit detail? Some stuff you might just skip over. Yeah, okay, okay. So, if I were to pull out the parts that are particularly uh, prevalent here, I would say the solution needs to be something that fits in with people's lifestyle. People aren't going to sit on their mm -hmm. desktop and input their food. It needs to be something that can easily assimilate into their lives, probably through a mobile app and can't be overly complicated. It needs to be something that they can input their food in on the go. You know, we can't have the assumption that everyone has their desktop available at all times. It needs to be more, more likely a, a mobile app, I would say. Uh, and I think the, the unique value proposition that differs to other apps that claim that they can do this is it has insights and education because it isn't just a tracking app of which you can put things in and see the amount of calories
celebrate all your macronutrients, it will give you the actionable insights around what you're eating and how to improve it if your goal indeed is, which is the point of the niche, to, to live a happier lifestyle. Um, I will quickly go down in the interest of time. So my core value, again, like I've just alluded to, is that I, I think it isn't to lose weight, it isn't to gain weight, it isn't to bulk, it isn't to necessarily meet a specific time-bound goal. I think it is a, an ongoing goal that our value meets, which is building the path to a happier and healthier and more sustainable lifestyle, as opposed to losing four pounds before a wedding, as an example. So my journey map, again, somewhat calls out those three pillars of understanding your baseline, seeing the suggestions and then implementing them and understanding how um, how much you've improved over the course of time by taking these recommendations, increasing the nutrition intent of your food. So I feel like the real core value is th when that third pillar is reached, the first pillar of understanding um, the, the, the basis of your current diet is important, equally the second pillar of seeing the recommendations, but actually I feel like the penny will drop when someone can see how much they have improved their scoring and how much healthier they feel and how much happier they feel. That is when I feel like that is the core value point of this product. And so how would I validate it? What do I need to do to feel like this is actually something which people would, would use? So what outcome do I want to achieve if I want to prototype this? So can I, can I do that? Can I build a detailed, somewhat thorough um, education? Or can I give that to, to users of this app through such a simple scoring system with a little bit of educational guidance thrown in? And what type of things do I need to address here? So I feel like, what is value? So do people genuinely want to build an education? Do people want to empower themselves or would they rather put all of their trust in an app and you have to tell them everything and track everything? Some people will, but some people like myself won't, you know, to have that knowledge themselves. They're not overly reliant on any given solution at any, any point. Uh, and usability, so it, it, I feel like the prototype that I would need to do here needs to be low touch, but the play needs to have the, the ability to give people educational content within it. Um, so <coughs> my point here that I would need a high fidelity prototype written. It could well be required in order to make sure that it has a correct UI and isn't overwhelming in throwing them a load of educational content, but then equally it isn't just telling them that carrots is better for you than a McDonald's. There needs to be some, some content within it, and I feel like the only way of proving that could be done through an app is to build a relatively high fidelity prototype, as I put in here particularly for the resonance of the educational content. I feel like the low fidelity wireframes wouldn't quite do it. How would I measure success of the um, prototype? So it's kind of all in, in a way. So you need to put in all of your, what you're eating. You can't just put in what you had for breakfast and then forget to put in the, you know, the bad food that you had for lunch and dinner in there. People need to be able to see the value in putting all of their meals worth of nutrition in there. Therefore, once they've done so, they're interacting with the content that's coming back at them based off of their input. And then thirdly, again, that third pillar is they're seeing an increased score. Uh, if someone isn't seeing an increased score, to me, that is a lack of this, which is powered by a lack of not putting their content in there. So for me, the success is coming through these three pillars and is unlocked here. People are uh, seeing the point of that, which was to improve it. I will skip that, which is the key, the key, key steps even, which I've just gone through. Again, the three pillars that have been quite prominent. And last but not least, I believe, is how do I, how would I intend to plan the topology of, of the teams that will be required in order to make this app or this product a success. So um, the, the areas that I've put are education and content. Again, this isn't a tracking app, and there needs to be some, some purpose behind people putting their their input in here, uh, the nutritional stories to give them the, the motivation behind why they are putting these things in here, uh, onboarding, expertise, advisory. So this was something you know, in terms of um, kind of a stream of work, I suppose, to, to increase perhaps like I've put on here revenue in that. There is, there is something, how do you get people to pay for this app? It's something that they, they come out towards, you know, the, the middle of this eight week block in that it's all well and good offering people that, but how do you get them to partake with their money? What can you offer them that they couldn't get from somewhere else? And is it perhaps expertise help from industry leaders, influencers, etc., which they, they wouldn't get from somewhere else? Um, 
and yeah, a, a conscious memory of just going into that into too much detail, giving the time. And that leads me <coughs> to the end, I believe. Yep. That's great. Uh, I'm just going to pause that and then we'll go into 